work for myself now. Government of one. But still a soldier. Ah, I can't just change the soundtrack of my life. Just like that. No. It's still apocalypse now. Black Hawk down. Platoon. Can't replace all that with... Rom-com music. <laughs> no. No thanks. Still a soldier. The Sensitive Underground Man by Alistair Jessamine Part 1 More coffee? Uh, thanks. Mm. Gas a little. I wonder if we should go with another supplier. Does seem awful expensive. I honestly can't be bothered with the hassle. Mm, this one's for you. Oh, what's this? 220 pounds for the quarter, though, Bob. It just seems outrageous. I'm sure we can find another provider who doesn't charge as much. You will remember me. My name is John Brody. Over the last few years... I've had plenty of time to reflect and consider. It's said revenge is a kind of wild justice, but it's the only justice to which I have recourse. I never had any faith in the powers that be, but in the past I was naive enough to believe that there might be somebody out there who would listen to my story. I now realise that I must administer justice myself. What you and my cousin did, abetted by your lawyer, cannot remain unpunished. Over the past five years, I've been thinking a lot about my time in Afghanistan. Bob? Bob, are you all right? What? You OK? Yes, yes. Who's it from? Oh, a patient. There's screeds of it. What does it say? It's not worth talking about. Ravings. You've gone white as a sheet. I'm fine. Hello? Hello? Cat? George? Hello, Thomas. What have you done to yourself? A wee tumble. Broke my ankle. Oh, no. How'd you do that? I can't even remember. I found myself on the kitchen floor, phoned Catherine, and she took me to the hospital. Oh, dear. When was this? This morning. Catherine's insisting I stop here for a while. Aye, of course. I said I could manage, but she insisted. No, that's fine. You could have uh, the spare room. Aye. She's made it up for me. It, actually, there's a funny buzzing noise in there. Is there? But I wonder if you could have a look at it. Not right now, obviously, yeah. but I, I don't think I could sleep with that buzzing noise. No, I'll sort it out. You in much pain? Ah, it's just inconvenient more than anything else. Thomas, have you ever thought about, about what are these things called? Oh, this bloody memory of mine, draft excluders. Draft excluders? There's an Arctic gale blown through here. Draft excluders would save you a lot of money apart from anything else. <laughs> oh. yep. Yep. George Logan? Oh, I'm afraid Catherine's just snipped out to the shop. She'll be back in five minutes. Uh, shall I get her to ring you? Right. OK. I'll tell her. Uh. Do you watch the golf, Thomas? the golf. Oh, it's on in five minutes. Do you fancy switching the telly on? <laughs> He's been here five hours. I'm ready to strangle him. It won't be for long, Cat. Could be weeks. It's enough to stay here. He said he'd be fine on his own. He's just saying that. He's shaking on his legs at the best of times. Oh. Five hours and I'm suffering from compassion fatigue. Well, he's your dad, isn't he? He's a special case. I suppose it's his memory that worries me, though. 
This fall seems to have made it worse. He's still a bit shocked, that's all. Something's not right. I know Dr Craig said it wasn't Alzheimer's, but something's not right. We're not going to have him staying here full time. He is not moving in. Of course not. It would never work. Who would want to anyway? Oh. He is so difficult. My mum had the patience of a saint, but even she... You'll smash those. Are you around tomorrow afternoon to stay with him? I'm meant to be interviewing this guy in the West End. Sure. And sorry, Tommy, would you mind going over and picking up some of his stuff? Pajamas and things? Okay, pajamas, SpongeBob, book, alarm and clock. And oh. And he was a client of ours, I'm sure of that. A GP, I think. No idea at all why he'd want to phone you. No. Can't even remember what he looked like. Perhaps you could phone him now, George. He did say it was very urgent. <sighs> I'm bushed. Tomorrow, eh? He sounded quite distressed. <sighs> Tomorrow, Thomas. I'd like to go to bed. Here. Let me help you up, Dad. Uh, no, no. If you could just pass me my crutch visa. I need to learn to do all this myself. You'll need a hand on dressing. I'll do it myself. Uh, 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 Thomas, that uh, buzzing noise in my room. It was just the trouser press. I've switched it off. <laughs> you don't seem like a man who would use a trouser press. OK. Night, night. Night. I'm sorry to put you to so much trouble. Back away. Just shout if you need a hand. Uh, Night, Dad. Uh, you shouldn't have pushed him about the phone call. He always does the opposite of what you ask. I know, but... You want a drink? Uh, whiskey. On the bus back from your dad's, I was sat next to this young guy. God almighty, his mind was like a sewer. The information's gone into overdrive, Cat. the moment I seem to be an aerial for every shabby thought flying through the air. Feels as if I've been drinking other people's dirty bath water all day. Oh, here. Get that down, you. Thank you. Hmm. That message on your dad's phone... I had this really unpleasant sense of the guy's state of mind. He was terrified. And I had an image of him kneeling and being shot through the head. Oh, bloody hell, Tommy. Shot by this tormented young man. I'm sorry to lay that on you. I mean, I never actually know if it's true or makes any real sense. All the stuff that comes at me. It might well just be random, meaningless. But it was very vivid. Tommy, I'm anxious enough as it is about Dad. I, I shouldn't have said anything. Sorry. 
Uh, I'm going to switch that telly off, please, Thomas. Sure. <sighs> Hello? Oh, hello. Uh, could I speak to Bob Anderson, please? Um, Bob isn't here. Who's calling? Uh, my name's George Logan. Bo Bob left me a message, asked me to call him back. Oh, well, uh, oh, look, I I'm sorry. You see, I'm a bit worried. Bob didn't come home last night, and... Uh, yeah. <laughs> Well, were you expecting him somewhere, or...? Uh, no, 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 he, he just called. I've, I've no idea what it was about. Uh, Bob used to be a client of mine. I'm a solicitor. Uh, well, uh, retired. Uh -huh. Well, <laughs> I don't know why he'd phone. Right. He's never done this before. I've contacted the police in there. Uh, oh, sorry. What's your name again? Uh, George Logan. Right. Yes. Look, sorry not to be able to help, OK? <laughs> goodbye. Uh, goodbye. Goodbye. Huh. He didn't come home last night, seemingly. His wife called the police. Didn't come home? I think we should call the police and tell them he phoned you. <sighs> it's a weird business altogether. Bob Anderson, this bloody memory of mine... Paul would know who he is. Paul? Uh, what were me in the firm? Senior partner now. He, he'd know. Give him a ring, George. Should I take my umbrella? Where is it? Oh, uh, under the coat there. <laughs> so who's this chap you're interviewing? Ex-army. He was in Iraq and Afghanistan. Oh, you're doing a feature on him? Maybe. I don't know yet. Are you going to be OK with Dad? Aye. A mate of his is coming over. Paul Wheeler Green. Oh, yeah, Paul. Your dad thought you might know who this Bob Anderson bloke is. Aye, well, don't get all worried about that. We've got enough to worry about. Oh, car keys. Ah. Oh, God, everything's in a muddle. His painkillers in the kitchen cabinet. Yep. Right, I've got everything. Where are you meeting this soldier? Kelvin Bridge. Kelvin Bridge? Underground station? Aye. What's wrong now? Nothing. Nothing. It's fine. Okay, see you, Tommy. Shouldn't be long. See you, Kat. Let me pray. Let me pray first. Can I ask how old you are, John? Thirty. Are you from Glasgow? Aye, Bears Den. Hutchie Grammar, then Oxford and Sandhurst. Are you an officer? That's right. Why did you ask to see me particularly? I mean, I'm an arts film critic, basically. Ah, well, exactly. Afghanistan sob stories. Ten a penny these days. But I thought I might have an interesting angle on it. Uh-huh. This might all seem a bit mad, but... When I was out there, I couldn't get movies out of my mind. It was unreal, you see. You were in a movie. You know, images from movies flashing through your mind as you were going through the desert, in the barracks, knocking hell out of the haji. Right, yeah. Oh, sorry, Taliban. When I was wounded, when I got this face, you know what was going through my mind as they flew me to the hospital? The bloody soundtrack from Black Hawk Down. Anyway, I thought it was an angle you might be interested in. Oh, absolutely. No, that does... Because how do you understand what's happening to you? How do you understand all that craziness? You talk, you box, you drink and you kick a ball around and you watch movies. Loads of them. We all did. Did you have a favourite? Ah, well, some cut it and some don't. Apocalypse Now, Platoon, Black Hawk Down. But now, what makes sense of the aftermath? What's this soundtrack now? Now that you don't look like the romantic lead, now you're all smashed up. 
You're on your own, you see. Suddenly. They wouldn't take me back, the army. So what movies should I watch now? What movies do you watch now? I don't. I make up my own, I guess, in my head. It's a bit noisy in here. Do you mind if we go outside? No, fine. Uh, we could go into the Kelvin walkway. Top up, Paul. Thanks. So, Paul, this Bob Anderson book. He's a GP. He was a client of ours. Still is. Aye. I thought he might have been a doctor. A few years ago, just before you retired, George, mm -hmm. there was a, a bit of trouble. You were changing a will for this wealthy old girl. She'd disinherited her nephew in favour of his cousin. Do you remember this? Uh, I'm not sure. <laughs> After she died, the nephew had really kicked off, contested the will, accused the cousin of turning the old lady against him. That rings vague bells. Anyway, the allegations just got wilder. The nephew said the cousin and the woman's GP, Bob Anderson, mm -hmm. had murdered the old lady. Uh -huh. yeah. There was an inquest because she died suddenly and there was a huge fortune in the will. Yeah. But the coroner ruled natural causes. No suspicious circumstances. Why do you think Anderson would phone George now? I really don't know. The young guy, the, the nephew, he used to turn up at the office all times of the day, pestering you, George. Was this guy ex-forces? That's right. He had that uh, post-traumatic stress thing, and he just became more and more unhinged. He was sectioned in the end. All the stuff with the will seemed to push him over the edge. Five years now I've been out of the army. Can I ask what happened? What, transformed me into the elephant man? Oh, sorry, I... No, that's fine. Suicide bomber. We were parked in a compound, and there was this boy. He seemed a decent kid. Sold us DVDs. One day he chucks himself in the back of the Land Rover and takes us all out. Three dead. Three mates and me. I could have saved him. I could have shot the boy as he was running at us. I told him to stop or I'd fire, but I couldn't quite believe it. That he was going to do what he did. God. Nightmare, yeah. But you know what's so difficult? I want to go back. I miss things. The excitement, feeling of being alive. I'll tell you something. When you engage the enemy, when you've got them in your sights, when you see them going down, it can be better than cocaine. Anyone will tell you. Euphoric. The army's dirty little secret. No movie I've seen does it justice. Now, here, one of Glasgow's wee secrets. That blocked off tunnel? Aye. Give us your hand. That's the way. Right. Have a look through there. What can you see? Look. Hang on. Get my torch. Chairs. A coffee table. Graffiti. It's a subway tunnel. Takes you round to the old Botanic Garden station. Which is amazing. Very atmospheric. Then it goes right round to Finiston. I'd heard there was an old station near the Botanic Gardens. I've never seen it. Would you like to go in? I could give you a wee tour. The station's only about 300 yards away. These slats just shift. Tunnel rats like me have loosened them all up. Uh, I think I'd rather not. Oh. OK. Understand. Maybe another time. We could just sit and have a drink at the table. I, I hid a bottle of whiskey under the, there. She'd still be there. Uh, Come on. Okay. Just watch yourself on those nails. Hi, 
That's it. Oh, mind your coat there. Glasgow has loads of these tunnels. Old subway and train tunnels. Freight shafts. Line shafts. No, they actually have raves in this one. Huh? Raves are making a comeback, by the way. Have a seat. <laughs> Lamp's still here. This is how I found it. Seats, table, battery-operated lamp. Been here two months at least. Nobody's taken it. Home comforts. <laughs> oh, I know. Whiskey. <laughs> and a cup for you. And one for me. Thank you. I enjoy talking to you. I feel you know what I'm on about. I enjoy talking to you too. I mean, everybody's polite, aren't they? Concerned. But they don't really want to know the truth. Underneath, they just want to get away from you as fast as they can. Away from this face. You seem to be able to listen. I appreciate it. Thank you. Actually, I can't be too long, John. You know, we could never work out how it was that after we'd cleared out a village, the Taliban kept popping back up. We reckon they came through the old irrigation tunnels. That's how they screwed the Russians. They're thousands of years old, those tunnels. They have this myth that a whole race lives down there. A whole underground civilization. Wow. Yeah. Listen, are you related to George Logan, the lawyer? Yeah. <laughs> He's my dad. Why'd you ask? I thought you must be related. You look really similar, around the face, same very blue eyes. You know my dad? Ah, he used to do a bit of work for me, and my aunt. Small world, eh? Give him my best, would you? Yes, I will. Actually, I... You could give him this tin. It's not got tobacco in it. It's... Well... He'll understand. I'll scribble him a wee note too. Right, um, Do you mind if we go in a minute, John? I feel a bit uncomfortable in here, to be honest. Ah, sure. Find it a bit spooky? I do, a bit. Well, we'll just knock this back and then the moose, eh? Thanks. I remember a young fella, quite distressed, that, uh... He gave you all this stuff to read, you remember? Mm. I mean, you were very patient with him, George, but he was paranoid, accusing his cousin and Bob Anderson of all sorts. He'd put together all this evidence, a huge big file, proof of this so-called conspiracy of theirs. Where would the file be now? Uh, still in the office somewhere. You had a good look through it, George, didn't you? Did I? It was all fantasy, you said. Mad stuff. Paul, do you think you could look out for me? Aye. Uh, but why, why would you want to see it? I'm just interested. I'm wondering if the guy who put together this file also sent the letter to Anderson. Yeah. Yeah, I'll have a look for it. Thanks. Anyway, this chap seemed to trust you, George. Didn't trust the police. They'd put a restraining order on him. Chucked him in the cells a few times. What was his name? John Brodie. John Brodie. Ex-forces, you said, George? Aye. His face was all disfigured, I seem to remember. That's right. He wore a glove in one hand. <laughs> Aye, well, I'd better be heading off, George. <sighs> He asked me to give you this tin. Mm. A medal? Why would he give me a medal? He said you would understand. And the uh, note, George? You are next. No, that makes no sense. 
You didn't give you any explanation, Kat? No, to be honest, I just wanted to get out of there. What made you go in? I know. I kind of trusted him, though. I liked him till it all started getting a bit weird. And you think it's the same man, the one that gave me the file? It has to be, George. The one, one side of his face all disfigured. Aye. I'll stick the gas fire on, Tommy. I'm really cold. It's freezing out there. A medal. Well, I can barely remember the bloke. I know I felt a bit sorry for him, but <laughs> you are next. I don't know. But can you remember him giving you this file Paul talked about? Well, very vaguely. I remember him being upset, but... Uh... He seemed sane enough. I mean, kind of obsessive. But interesting and intelligent. I just started feeling a bit uneasy in the tunnel. Can I see the medal, George? Aye. And the note? Yeah, there you go. Oh, what's going on, Tommy? Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. You are next. E. I. Crawford? Joe, Thomas Sutter. Thomas, how are you? Um, well, thanks, I. Joe, you have a missing person. Uh -huh. His name's Bob Anderson. Fact is, I have a very strong sense he's been murdered. This is the letter Anderson received from Brody in the morning of his disappearance. About 20 pages. And Anderson didn't phone the police? No. He phoned George and not the police? Now, George Logan features a few times. That's part of a conspiracy, Brody's alleging. First page there. What you and my cousin did, abetted by your lawyer, cannot remain unpunished. Hmm. Uh, this is the note he sent to George. You are next. Same handwriting. I'll take this away for me, Thomas. Yeah. What makes you think Anderson's been killed? I just had a very strong feeling when I got the answer message that he'd been shot. Did you find out much about Brody? <clears throat> no more than you already know. He was badly wounded in Afghanistan. Almost died. Post-traumatic stress. Then this business with the will made him even more unbalanced. A lot of threatening and violent behaviour. Well, he was sectioned, finally. He came out of hospital about a month or two ago. So, how long was he in hospital? About three years. Uh, this contains a photocopy of Brody's letter and a photograph of the missing man. Thanks for putting yourself out, Joe. I appreciate it. Oh, I'm going to see Brody's cousin tomorrow. His name's Collins. Get his story. Well, the guy who got the old lady's money in the end. That's right. A sizable fortune. Well, according to Brody, Collins instigated the whole so-called plot. And protection for George? Aye. I'll get onto that right away. Catherine Logan. Don't you fall for her. Just don't. Screws everything up. I need her to get to her dad. Aye. Is that really why you want to see her again? They can't get away with murder. I'm sorry for their loved ones, but that's justice. Better go. They'll be looking for you now. We got a Black Hawk down. We got a Black Hawk down. Super 6-1 is down. Shoot him, John! What are you waiting for? Fire! It mentions Dad again here. What's that? 
You, Collins and Logan betrayed my aunt at every turn. Took advantage of her naivety and good nature. Drove a wedge between us and finally, you killed her. In Death Wish, when Charles Bronson took out his enemies, cinema audiences stood and cheered. When the police and the government remain willfully blind, the lawless outsider is the only hope for true justice. Oh, there's loads of this stuff. Oh, it's horrible, Tommy. I can't read anymore. Your dad's going to be all right, Kat. From tomorrow, there's going to be someone on the door day and night. You think Brody killed the man who phoned Dad? The doctor? We don't know that. You say it? Well, I'm sometimes wrong. Why did Brody want to talk to me, Thomas? Not sure. Was it just a ruse to get to Dad? But he could have just sent Dad the medal and the note. All that film stuff he was talking about, he seemed genuinely passionate about it all. Maybe it's like this letter. How do you mean? He seems to want to explain himself, justify himself. That line. Aye. He said that I listened. It seemed really important to him. Oh, it started to feel a bit embarrassing, actually. Is there anything else you can tell me about him? Not really. I could see that he used to be handsome. Before the injury. You interested in horses, Inspector? An occasional flutter, Mr Collins. That's about it. This girl here, White Duchess. Keep an eye out for her. She could make your fortune. And thanks for the tip. Mm. So no letters or phone calls from your cousin recently? No. Ah, oh, poor old John, eh? We were quite close when we were kids. Our families used to have holidays together in Donegal. He was a different man when he came back from the army. It destroyed him. When did you last speak to Mr Brody? Well, last time I saw him was just before he was sectioned. He came to the house, threatened to kill me. He had a knife. No, oh, man. He accused me of murdering our aunt. He was the one that almost killed her. How do you mean? He lived with her for a while when he got back from Afghanistan. After all the treatment for his wounds and burns and so on, he moved in with her. And, well, oh, he'd lost it. He should have been in a mental hospital from the word go. He lashed out at her a few times. No real reason. Hmm, so was this why she changed the role, you think? Basically. I mean, he'd become totally irresponsible. A danger to people. She used to come on the phone to me in tears. He even assaulted a neighbour's kid. And John was such a good bloke, you know, before the bloody army. And Bob Anderson, the GP, he hasn't contacted you? No. I never really knew the guy. He was my aunt's doctor. We shared the same crazy stalker. End of story. Well, your cousin's letter to Anderson was extremely threatening. And contained threats of violence towards yourself. Right. Well, given that Mr Anderson has gone missing, we'd like you to consider some form of police protection. I well, let me think about that. You know, I don't have any bad feelings towards John. What happened to him in Afghanistan, it sent him crazy. It wasn't his fault. Tommy. Yeah? Got your coffee, Tommy? Is that okay? Sure. Come in. Oh, your candles are burnt right down. Aye. Did you come to bed at all last night? You didn't, did you? No. What are you up to? Just looking at this map. It shows Glasgow's old tunnels. This is where you were. The York Hill Tunnel's here. There's one off the Gallow Gate and Lady Well. The mine shafts here beneath the university. Tunnels below Central Station. Old underground stations there. 
There. Loads of them. And this is the missing man. All right. Any sense of where he is? Oh, not really. Brody talked a lot about tunnels. He talked about those ancient tunnels in Afghanistan. Aye, he mentions them in the letter to Anderson. There's an ancient legend among the Hindus of India that tells of a civilization which exists underground, north of the Himalayas, possibly in Afghanistan. A race, a race which, which only, only occasionally, occasionally travels, travels into, into our land through an ancient network of tunnels. I sometimes like to imagine a similar civilization in our own country, where the true individuals live, the disempowered, the outlaws, the outcasts, the vigilantes, who occasionally ascend into your world of deceit and privilege. Yesterday, Paul, we heard the police coming and going, talking to me and Catherine. And I had the physiotherapist and the nurse. I haven't had time to draw breath. Well, was it all right for me to come today? Oh, aye. Aye, nice to have a proper visitor. Aye, uh, I brought you some drum beauty. Oh, you're a champion. <laughs> Your pills, Dad. Don't forget. I just leave them at the coffee table. Paul brought me some drum beauty. Oh, that was nice. <laughs> Oh, you don't look very comfortable. Do you want uh, something behind your back? Do we just stop fussing, Catherine? I've broken my ankle. I'm not at death's door. Why, so blooming independent. Yeah, yeah, wouldn't you like to nurse this old bugger? <laughs> <laughs> I'll get you some water for those pills. I'll tell you, the sooner I'm back at my own, who's the better? Would you pass the Radio Times ball? See when the golf's back on. There you go. George, mm. you know that file Brody gave you? Aye, uh, well, uh, sort of. You remember destroying it? Destroying it? Shredding it. I, I remember not long after he gave it to you, I happened to come into your office and you were shredding it. Why did I do that? You said it was nonsense, fantasy. Well, even so, I, I shredded it. Aye. I better tell Thomas. I said I was going to look for it in the office, you see, but uh, is that all right to tell him? Why wouldn't it be if, if that's what I did? Right. Why would I destroy it? I'm, I'm sorry, the service is just finished. Aye. I just wanted to sit for a while, if that's OK. Yes, but uh, I'll have to lock up in about uh, ten minutes, though. You don't recognise me, do you? I used to come here with my aunt, Margaret Brody. Margaret, yes. Uh, so you must be... John. Uh, John. How are you, John? Oh, up and down. I used to quite enjoy coming here. I enjoyed the silence. Just sitting here, you know. And at least you Quakers have a lack of dogma. That's important to me. Uh-huh. Although, you know, I can't subscribe to pacifism. It seems naive to me. My aunt was naive. She got taken advantage of. All her talk of love and peace. Where did it get her in the end? Are you all right, son? Can I get you a drink of water or something? No, I just want to sit, if that's OK. Uh, sure. It had to be done. What did, sir? Hmm? Nothing. I'll just sit here for a while. Uh, right. Uh, I'll be through in the vestibule if you want me. His dinner's getting cold. I don't like to disturb him when he's working. Working? Hmm. What's he doing there? I mean, every time I pass the room, I get this whiff of illegal substances. He's burning incense, Dad. You cook him a nice dinner, and he's not even here to eat it. Catherine, 
I know I'm speaking out of turn, but you must admit, he's a bit strange. And you've always been gregarious, pet, and I wonder if he's really the kind of bloke you need. Dad. I'm just thinking of you, dear. I am very happy with Tommy. Well, you don't seem very happy. Well, I am. Well, you can't hide things from me, Catherine. I can tell when you're happy and when you're not. Would you just eat your dinner? I'm happy, OK? I'm very, very happy. Getting stone cold sitting now. I'll go and tell him, shall I? Dad. Revenge, it is said, is a kind of wild justice. But it remains the only justice to which I now have the cause. Please. You, Collins and Logan, betrayed my aunt at every time. Occasionally travel into our land through an ancient network of tunnels. Joe, it's Thomas. Thomas? I've got a reading. I think I know where he is. The old Botanic Gardens underground station. He's here, I'm sure. He can we really down there, near the platform? You may have more light over here. There. By the side, that bundle. More light over here, please. Body all right. It's Anderson. Shot through the head. Sir, other side of the track. I think there's another one. Aye, I see it. Another shot to the head. Who is it? Is it Collins? I was talking to him two days ago. Hi, it's Collins. In part one of The Sensitive Underground Man by Alistair Jessamine, Thomas Souter was played by Robin Lane, Cat by Julie Duncanson, Brody. Simon Donaldson George Finlay Welsh D.I. Crawford Stevie Hannan Paul Finlay McLean Bob Anderson John Shedden and Mrs. Anderson by Anne Scott Jones Other parts were played by the cast The Sensitive was a BBC Scotland production directed in Glasgow by Bruce Young Sensitive Underground Man by Alistair Jessiman. Part 2. You should leave. I'll be looking for you. Yes. He's on the deck. Still. Calm. Breathe. It's a father you're after. You start falling for her, you're in trouble. Remain at all times detached. At all times, remain purely professional and detached. Okay. 
Can I get anyone a drink? Oh, thanks, Margaret. Tea, milk, no sugar. George? Uh, black for me, tart. Margaret. Yes, that's her name, Dad. I hope she's brought her own tea bags. Are you going to try and be nice to her? What's she here for? You know why she's here. She's a policewoman. There's two of them outside the house. What do we need her for? Tommy and I can't be with you all the time, Dad. She's here for your own safety. She wouldn't be much use in a scrap, would she? She's only about five foot three. You're just going to have to try and cooperate a bit more. Co- cooperate? I don't, I don't see why I should Because this guy's killed two people. And he's threatened you. Sorry. What's he got against me, Catherine? We really don't know, do we? I can hardly even remember the bloke. Well, what can you remember? It might help Tommy. What's Tommy got to do with it? Tommy might be able to find him. Oh, I don't know, Catherine. It's all just really confusing. Sitting here in your house, police in and out, all this madness. I know. I can hardly mind my own name these days. And when does this plaster come off? My ankle itches like hell. Three weeks. Oh, I'll be happier when I'm back in my own house. Me too. Oh, sorry for being a burden. <laughs> Dad. Of course you're not a burden. Here we are. Oh. Oh, thanks, Margaret. I've been meaning to ask, Margaret, uh, have the regulations changed? What regulations? The height regulations. Dad. Stop! Stop right there or I'll fire! Stop, John! Will you hear Stop! Stop! Fire! So what have we got? Well, up until the bombing incident, he seemed pretty much a model soldier. I lost three members of his platoon. Mm-hmm. Almost died himself. Terrible wounds, post-traumatic stress, became more and more mentally unstable. And there were no suspicious circumstances around his aunt's death? No. Nope. Coroner's report here. Looks like it was all fantasy then. Brody becomes violent and unbalanced. His aunt cuts him out of the well. He invents a conspiracy theory about his cousin and the aunt's GP. And about the man who drew up the well, George, who is one of the most honest men I know. Straightforward paranoia, then. Except Brody gave George a file. Evidence to back up his conspiracy theory. George destroyed it, according to his colleague. Though George can't remember doing that. And <laughs> why would George destroy it? And there's Brody's letter to Anderson. Aye. Uh, well, mad stuff, but... There's something in that letter that rings true. Do you have any sense what Brody might be? Oh, not really. I get a bit of a reading from this medal, the one he sent George. John Michael Brody, 2009... For operational service. And the man who wore this medal, he was a good man once. You are next. Why did Brody want to talk to me, Thomas? Why contact me? Fire! Sure, George! What are you waiting for? Sure, George! Fire! Hey. Couldn't sleep. No, me neither. Tea in the pot. So, what's going on in your noddle there? Oh, you know, usual stuff. And what's usual stuff? Images, voices. All cranked up this time. I feel a responsibility to find this guy, more than usual. Because of George, I suppose. It's not just your responsibility. The police are doing everything they can. Mm. And Dad's safe. Yeah. When you met Brody, did you feel scared at all? Not really. Well, that's what's scary, I liked him. Aye, he was damaged goods, but he seemed so intelligent. 
All that stuff about movies. It was when he was showing me the tunnel, or something felt wrong then. I think he fell for you a bit. Why'd you ask that? I don't know. Just the way you talk about him. Well, I guess we connected. He said he could open up to me. Whether or not he fell for me, oh, I don't want to think about it anymore. No. Stay home tomorrow, Cap. I can't. There's a big editorial meeting at the paper. Why do you want me to stay at home? Oh, no reason. Tommy. Go near fresh fruit. Six letters. I used to be able to finish this in an hour. Less. Where's the budget? Margaret doesn't come until nine. I don't think she likes me. Well, you can't really blame her, George, can you? <sighs> Go near fresh fruit, six letters. <sighs> What's happening today? Paul's coming to see you. Oh, I, I, well, he's been very good. I don't know how he manages to take the time off work, mind you. Did you trust him when you worked together? Trust him? Why wouldn't I trust him? Just wondering. Orange. Eh? Go near fresh fruit. Orange is an anagram of go near. Is it? Oh, I. Uh, Paul was always good at his job. Good lawyer. Lazy, though. He used to have three hour lunch breaks. Who are you texting? Cat. <laughs> All this texting nonsense. Hallelujah chorus. Seven letters. I don't know, George. Why are you so jumpy? Would you like chocolate on that? No, thanks. One regular cappuccino to take away. Two fifty. There you go. Thank you. Have a good day. Thank you. Don't turn around. Have a knife, Catherine. Do exactly as I say. Keep walking. So, Paul, have you seen the WPC that's standing guard? <laughs> she wouldn't be much use in a scrap. No. No. <laughs> She'd be blown over by a high wind, I tell you. Well, you're just going to have to get used to it, George. He's right, George. All for your own protection. It's a weird business. And that's not a brody. He sent me a note. You will be next. Nah, you showed me. And a medal. Did you ever talk to him, Paul? Not really. You just saw him round the office. I remember his face. But all this stuff he gave me, the file and everything, I'm wondering if I ever read it at all. I can't even mind anything about it. I wasn't very well at the time. No. Nah. I didn't give it to you. No. Why would I destroy it? Still no memory of it. None. Well, take it from me, George. Excuse me, George. Hello? Hello, could I speak to Catherine, please? Oh, Kat's gone to work, I'm afraid. Um, she's not here. This is David Campbell at the Glasgow Voice. Oh, yeah. Oh, we're expecting her about an hour ago for a meeting. Oh, she knew it was happening. All oh, right, that's odd. OK, thanks. Bye. Thanks, bye. What is it, Thomas? Kat's uh, late for work. <laughs> There's no like her. Have a seat. I'm sorry about the knife. It was the only way to get you here. Would you like a drink? Whiskey or...? No. no. Tea? Glass of water? A glass of water. Right. Basement flats, noisy. But it's theory. Eh? I, I don't tend to stay places very long, so I, I never really get to do things up. Here. Please. Why did you bring me here? Don't touch it. OK. 
cat where are you good question I get the occasional text you know to tell me about a rave in the, in the same tunnel I showed you that's about the limit of my social life John why am I here well I, I just wanted to talk to you really I like you you seem to know what I'm on about. You listen. And there's your dad, isn't there? What about my dad? Your dad was part of it. Part of what? My cousin, Michael Collins, stole my inheritance. He made my aunt hate me, made up lies about me. Got her to change her will. He put it around I was a madman, a, a psycho. He and the GP Anderson were in it together. They killed my aunt. And I had a statement, a written retraction from my neighbour that I didn't assault her bloody kid. That Collins had forced her to go to the police and lie. Times, dates, irrefutable proof. And I gave it all to your father. Your dad was in on it. I think they gave him a cut to ignore it all. Why else did he keep quiet? My dad wouldn't do a thing like that. Well, I think he did. I can't believe that's true. When he read that file, he would have known the will he'd drawn up was very, very dodgy indeed. Why didn't you give your file to the police? Oh, they'd been harassing me for months. You'd think they would have taken me seriously. I thought they might listen to your father. More fool me. He was ill. He had to hand a lot of his work over to his colleagues. Please, John, just let me go. I'm sorry. You don't know my dad. He's absolutely straight. How? How can you be sure? Because I trust him. I love him. I know he wouldn't do anything like that. That suicide, the kid that took us all out, we used to hang out with him, buy DVDs from him played frisbee with him. He, he seemed a really nice kid. And then one day, he's running towards the Land Rover, his shirt packed with explosive. He did this. In my face. To me. He killed three of my mates. That kid we all liked. And my aunt believed my cousin over me. Loved him. Trust him. And he always screw you over, Catherine. not answering her phone. No, oh, I'm sure she's fine. Right, I'll be off. Flying visit, but I'll, uh, I'll nip back and see his nibs next week sometime. Right, coat. Cap. He's not doing too bad, all things considered. I need to call Joe Crawford. Eh? Brody, I'm uh, worried that Brody... What? I knew. She'd have insisted she stay home. She's just late for work, Thomas. Is that so sinister? No, there's something wrong here. I sense it. And what are you hiding, Paul? Sorry? You know something about all this. What are you talking about, Thomas? From the first time you came here, I could see it in your face. That if there is anything you know, please say now. I'm sorry, I haven't a clue. You know something! Thomas, you're upset. This is making no sense the at guilt, all. The guilt, the fear in your face, in your voice. Look, I'm going to go, okay? Give me a phone if there's anything I can do. <sighs> Thomas, what's going on? Why were you shouting? I'm just worried. I can't. Why? Is there anything wrong, Thomas? Th Margaret, can I have a word? Want a cigarette? No, thanks. Talk to me, if you like. I'm sorry. I killed those two men, Anderson and Collins, because what they did couldn't go unpunished. 
okay. It's the law of the jungle, but that's how things operate. It's the way it is, Catherine. Please, John. Please, just let me go. Let you go? I'm very scared. And I'd like to go. I won't harm you. But your father... I'm sorry. It's got to be done. Oh, please don't hurt him. I promise you, he never did anything. Can't. I'm wearing your scarf. I can smell your perfume, your hair. Can't. Where are you? And just change the soundtrack of my life. Just like that. I'm very scared. You think he fell for you a bit? No. It's still apocalypse now. Black Hawk down. Platoon. Thomas. 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 George. What's going on, Thomas? I was just about to talk to you. Come in. Well, that policeman's radio is kicking off all the time and she's been really cagey. What's, what's happening? We're just a bit worried about Kat. Oh? Why? Why so worried? We think Brody might have taken her. Oh, God. Aye. Why would he kidnap Catherine? I might be wrong. Oh, my God. The police are looking for her, George. They're doing everything they can. You remember the last line of the Seven Samurai? No. The leader talking to the samurai that survived. The farmers have won, not us. The farmers always win. The greedy, stupid farmers. My cousin. He was all right as a kid. So what happened? He became greedy is what happened. Your dad, another greedy farmer. John, tell me about your aunt. Hmm? My aunt? Why do you want to know about her? I don't know. Is that her? The photo above the gas fire? Aye, it is I. I don't pretend I don't miss her. She was very kind to me. But it's there to remind me about what she did. It's not there to get sentimental over. No. She was a Quaker. She didn't want me to join the army. Oh, they'll squeeze all the goodness out of you, John. They will quench the light within. I never knew my dad. And my mum was... not up to having a kid, basically. So, Aunt Margaret looked after me. She was fierce in a way. In a good way. Until her mind started failing. Till they poisoned her against me. We used to go to the Quaker meeting house in Dunblane Street every Sunday. I liked sitting there with her. The silence. I've started going again. Just for a bit of peace, you know? A bit of peace and quiet. I just sit there after the service. But... Where did it get her in the end, eh? All that love and peace. It sounds like you were very fond of her. She betrayed me, Catherine. <laughs> she used to help me with my homework. <laughs> More fun than my teachers. Put things I drew up on the wall. Oh, and see that? That monstrosity over there. The tree? Tea tree, yeah. One of the few things I've kept. I made that woodwork. Bloody slate and wood as thick as my head. But she kept it. I always put the tea things on it. Though she could scarcely carry the thing. I used to boast about it to the visitors. Look what John made. Do you think... 
I could have some tea. Uh, sure. What do you take? Milk. And, um, two sugars. You want some biscuits? Thanks, yes. I'll put them on a plate. I'll get the tray, shall I? Sure. Nice and proper. Don't get many visitors. I hope the milk's okay. Ah, that's fine. I think there are some digestive... Ah! Give me your phone. Why do you want my phone? Just give me it. What are you going to do? What I should have done when you first got here. Does your dad have a mobile? N no. Dad. There we are. D A D. Oh no, wait! Keep quiet. <laughs> George Logan. If you don't want Catherine to be harmed, remain perfectly quiet. Don't react. Don't say a thing. Go into a room where there's nobody around. There's nobody here except me. Who is this? Is Catherine all right? Tell him you're safe. That's it. Dad. Dad, it's me. Catherine. I'm okay. Catherine. She'll remain safe. Only if you do exactly as I say. Seven o'clock this evening, you go into your bedroom. You open the curtains. You turn on the light. You stand by the window. Do you understand? Yes. But wait, can I... What are you going to do? I'm going to have to tie you up. Put some tape over that mouth. I'm sorry, but you're not to be trusted. Please don't do this. My dad didn't do anything. Be quiet. I was scared, John. What else could I have done? I, I, I thought you were going to kill me. Quiet now. No, we're okay, thanks. Still nothing? Nothing. That's what, ten hours? Uh, yeah. Can I fix either of you some food? No, thanks. Uh, I'm not hungry. George? Uh huh? You want any food? No, no. Uh, what's the right time? Why do you keep on? It's almost seven. Okay, uh, I'm going to go to my room now for a wee lie down. Uh, could you give me a hand? Sure. Yeah. Oh, okay. I'll get uh, the door. Mm. Thomas. Mm-hmm. Nothing. Nothing, son. George, you have two minutes. Has to be done. Professional. Detached. <gasps> Good. Curtains. Lights. That's the way, George. That's the way. And breathe. And aim. And squeeze. And squeeze. Shut up, John! Please. Don't do this. What are you waiting for? Fire! I promise you. He never did anything. Yes. 
It's Brody. Is Catherine all right? She's fine. Listen, a few years ago I gave you a file. Do you remember? Yes. I mean, vaguely. Why didn't you please, act on it? Please don't hurt Catherine. Tell me the truth and she won't be harmed. You told me you read the information I gave you. I trusted you. I was ill. I, I, I don't know. I think... I, Honest to God, I can't remember reading it. You said if I had any allegations, I'd put things down in writing. In detail, I did. There was absolute proof in there of my cousin's guilt. I'm sorry, I, I can't remember any of this. Did you talk to my cousin about what was in the file? Or to the doctor, Anderson? No. No, I, I, I'm sure I didn't. Did you give the file to anyone? Well, I thought I gave it to my colleague. He says not. I don't know. I'm, I'm confused. My memory's not very good. Are you still there? Hello? I'm still here. I'll do anything you want, but don't hurt Catherine, please. What was your colleague's name? Paul. Wheeler Green. Why? Where does he live? Is he still around? Bear Stan, why do you want to know? Tell nobody I phoned, and Catherine won't be harmed. You all right? My dad? Your dad's okay. <laughs> Just lift your arms. Oh, the tiger's too tight. The rest of them. I'm sorry. I was angry. There you go. You didn't do anything. I'm just not sure, to be honest. About what? If he was part of it. He's all right? Yes. <laughs> oh, I feel really weird. You gave me quite a whack with that tree. I'm sorry. I'm gonna have to leave. God. I can hardly be bothered. You'll... You'll tell them where I am. I won't. I promise. I guess you can go. Go? If you can walk, all right. I can walk. Paul Wheeler Green? Y yes. My name's John Brody. Uh, Let's go to the bottom of the garden. What do you want? Just do as I say. P please, Come don't. Come on. What do you want? Keep walking. I'm going to ask you some questions. If you lie, I'm going to kill you. So think hard. Please. You understand? Yes. I gave a dossier to George Logan about three years ago. You know the one I'm talking about? Yes. Did he read it? I, I, I don't know. I'm not sure. Not good enough. I want the truth. <coughs> no! Okay. Okay, he, he didn't read it. He, he passed it on to me. You read it? Yes. So you knew my aunt was put under pressure to change the will? That Collins and Anderson were friends. You knew that their allegations against me were false. Yes, I, I did, yes. And you knew Anderson and Collins killed my aunt. They didn't. They didn't kill her. I told you the truth. But I am telling you the truth. I, I, I looked into your allegations in the file and found out that, yes, Collins and Dr Anderson knew each other. 
Go on. I, I confronted Anderson. He was a client of ours. He'd, he'd been very ill at ease because, well, because Collins had put your aunt under so much, so much pressure to change her will. Your aunt confided in Anderson, you see, and, and is, is this what you want? Keep going. <laughs> the, uh, well, the, the strain in your aunt affected her heart. Anderson believed it led to her death. He also told me Collins had, had invented those allegations of violence. You know, against the kid and so on, as you said in the file. But Anderson didn't speak out? No. Why not? Oh, he was an alcoholic. He'd made some very bad calls with patients, you know. A patient died. Misdiagnosis. Collins knew. Anderson had confessed to him, you see, years before, and, and Collins used it to keep Anderson qu quiet. You didn't speak out either. No. I've always regretted it. I had debts. How much did my cousin give you? Oh, I'm, not, I'm not sure. The truth! I, a, a lot, a, a sizable amount. What, what are you going to do? I don't know. You, you Shut you, up! I have children, please. And a lovely house. Oh, a nice garden. Two cars, eh? What do I have? I'm sorry. I was in debt. I didn't know what to do. What do I have? Tell me. I, I, I don't know. What do I have? Nothing. That's right. I don't have a house or kids. I have nothing. I can't do it. Oh, you greedy, self-centered, cowardly little shit. Your little life. Your pathetic little life. Oh, oh God! Oh, please! Please! I can't do it. Oh, I hope I didn't hit a rook. No. Intelligent no. birds, eh? No. Bury their own dead. Please. Oh. Or is that crows? Please. Please. Oh. Okay. Okay. What? You go straight to your car. Yes. You drive to the nearest police station. You tell them what you've just told me. Yes. You go to the police and tell them what really happened. And if you don't... I swear to God, I will kill you. Okay. Th thank you. So go. Run. Go on. Run! Hello? Hi. We have your number to contact. Who is this? There's a rave tonight in the York Hill Tunnel. A rave? Thanks. <laughs> you can't remember any landmarks. A school. I passed a school. It was a busy street. I was I was in such a state. I just got in the first taxi or so. You remember the name of the school? Anything about it? Uh, no, no more questions. She needs to rest. I'm sorry. I wasn't thinking. It doesn't matter, Cap. You won't be there anymore. Tommy. It's all right, Kat. It's all right now. Let's get let's get you to bed. I don't know how I'm going to sleep. Those pills should knock you out, eh? Thomas Sutter. Thomas, it's Joe Crawford. Paul Wheeler Green's been in contact with us. No good. It's all coming back. She's brought it all back. Catherine Logan. I can't be alone anymore. Oh, God. Keep it together. Yeah. Thanks. It's my birthday. Happy birthday. Thanks. 
Tonight, tonight I love everybody. See her, best friend, Hannah. I love Hannah. Kenny, my boyfriend. I love Kenny. What's your name? John Brody. Oh, I love you, John Brody. I love David Cameron. I love Joseph Stalin. I love bloody Hitler. Who about you? Catherine Logan. Car Sergeant Eric McLean. Lance Corporal Andrew Taylor. Private Callum Forbes. Callum Forbes? Man. Aunt Margaret. I love your Aunt Margaret too. I loved her. She put my pictures on the wall. <laughs> Are you okay? Aunt Margaret. Put my pictures on the wall. Proud of me. She was. She was proud of me. Where are you, Brody? Where is he, Cat? I think you know where he is. I've started going again. Just for a bit of peace, you know? A bit of peace and quiet. Tommy? Morning. Time is it? Half ten. How are you feeling? Doped up. What are you doing? I was just lying here, looking at you. It's nice to have you back. Mm. It's nice to be back. I couldn't help you. I couldn't find you. The information was all so confused. You're here now. Listen, I need to ask you something. Mm -hmm. I need to ask you a question, and I want you to say the first thing that comes into your head. Would you do that? Yeah. Where's Brody? Brody? I don't know, Tommy. Why'd you ask that? I just had a strong sense that you knew where he was. I don't. Oh, Tommy. Okay, I'm sorry. It was so horrible. I know. I just want to go back to sleep. Sure, sure. I'm sorry. What day is it? Sunday. He's in church. Church? He's gone to church. We used to go to the meeting house in Dumblain Street every Sunday. I've started going again. Uh, Elizabeth? No, uh, Dad, it's, it's not Mum. It's me. It's Catherine. Catherine? Mm. Move your feet so I can sit in the bed. <laughs> remember how I used to come in with you and Mum <laughs> on a Saturday morning? Do you remember? <laughs> <laughs> I do. <laughs> Cuddling up between the two ears. <laughs> <laughs> I thought he was going to kill me, Catherine. Stand by the window there. I know, Dad. But I would have done anything for you, pet, to keep you safe. I know. Anything. I'd, I'd do anything for you. 
John Brody. Yes. My name's Thomas Sutter. I'm Catherine Logan's partner. Ah. And this is Detective Inspector Crawford. Could we go outside, please, sir? Awful lot of you to take one man, eh? I must be important. Mr. Brody. I claim sanctuary. The sanctuary of the church. <laughs> Tell Catherine I'm sorry, will you? Would you do that? Yes. I'll squeeze all the goodness out of you, John. And they will quench the light within. That's what man used to say. I should have been a farmer. A samurai always lose. Mr. Brody. Give me five minutes. John Brody, I am arresting you under suspicion of murder. You don't have to say anything, but it may harm your defence if you do not mention, when questioned, something you later rely on in court. Anything you do say may be taken down and given in evidence. Do you understand? Is there anything you want to say at this time? Help me. For God's sake, somebody help me. In part two of The Sensitive Underground Man by Alistair Jessiman, Thomas Souter was played by Robin Lane, Cat by Julie Duncanson, Brody, Simon Donaldson, George, Finlay Welsh, D.I. Crawford, Stevie Hannan, Paul, Finlay McLean, and the WPC by Sharon Young. Other parts were played by the cast. The Sensitive Underground Man was a BBC Scotland production directed in Glasgow by Bruce Young.